Napoleon is finally available to watch in theaters. This is the movie that has been expected for a long time. I remember always wondering when they were going to make a Napoleon movie. One of my favorite directors, Stanley Kubrick, announced he was going to make a Napoleon film, but he never ended up doing it. And the screenplay is online. You can read it. But he just seems like such an iconic character, Napoleon Bonaparte, just a historical figure that you would assume Hollywood would want to make a movie about. And it's finally happening, and we have one. It's directed by Ridley Scott, who's made some great movies, Alien, Blade Runner, The Martian, the you know, a t trailer for this movie showcases all his directorial credits. They're really trying to sell people on this movie. And I saw it in glorious IMAX. I saw it, well, in a regular IMAX theater. It was not the huge Lincoln Square one, but I still got the best possible experience to see this movie. And I'm happy I saw it. But I honestly did not think the movie was as great as, you know, it could have been. Ridley Scott's Napoleon is a visual feast. It showcases the director's trademark craftsmanship with really great battle scenes that are nothing short of impressive. However, behind all the explosions and the war-torn landscapes, the film struggles to find a cohesive narrative that connects its spectacular set pieces. I thought the film's major flaws lie in David Scarpa's screenplay, which attempts to encapsulate Napoleon Bonaparte's life from his rise to power during the French Revolution to his death in 1821 within the constraints of a single film. And like I said, the battle scenes in this are really good. The opening at the Siege of Toulon in 1793 is a great moment. It's graphic, it's brutal, it's very well shot, and it provides a glimpse into Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal of Napoleon, and the film fails to maintain this early promise. It really shows, you know, Napoleon in the moment. It shows him fighting. It shows this urgency, but it really kind of loses that as the movie goes on. I thought Phoenix's performance, you know, it's initially very captivating, but it's overshadowed by a screenplay that lacks depth, and it fails to explore the complexities of its central character. The attempt to anchor the narrative with the letters between Napoleon and Josephine, played by Vanessa Kirby, it falls short of infusing the film with the anticipated heat and passion that you could get from a movie like this. I really wanted to see a movie about a man who couldn't live without a woman or a woman who couldn't live without a man, but it really just feels very surface level, and it's, it's two-dimensional. I just feel like there was more this movie could have done. It feels like you're reading a textbook at times as opposed to watching a grand blockbuster, and to that, I kind of wondered, what's the point? You go to the cinema to see a story portrayed in a more escapist way than reading a textbook, but at times, Napoleon the movie feels like you're just reading a textbook. It doesn't bring its own personal spin to it. Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor, and I think Vanessa Kirby also does great work here, but the movie just doesn't service these personal moments. It just feels like it's always trotting along between cutting between battles and political discussions. I do want to see what the four-hour cut of this movie holds as I believe there must be more in that edit than this one. It's really, it's two hours and 37 minutes, but it feels like it's cut down and a lot of the meat of this movie is missing. There aren't really that many great moments where you see Napoleon the Conqueror. You just see him in a couple scenes like where he is coronator when he storms a couple castles, but there isn't really this grand feel of Napoleon, this legendary figure. It just has this disappointingly factual approach to its historical subject. There's not the depth and resonance that you might expect from Scott's other films. And despite these shortcomings in its storytelling, Napoleon does redeem itself to some extent with its technical brilliance, the meticulously crafted battle sequences from the Siege of Toulon to the iconic Battle of Waterloo. And I really liked the Battle on the Ice. That was probably my favorite one. It showcases Scott's mastery in creating visually stunning war epics and the bloodied bodies breaking through the ice and soldiers charging into battle. It has this palpable energy that will appeal to fans of historical war dramas, but the film's focus on spectacle over substance leaves it feeling unwieldy and a bit disjointed. It's a departure from Scott's usual penchant for big ideas. I even thought The Martian was a little better just with how it kind of grounds a personal perspective. You get more with Matt Damon's f fictional astronaut character than you do with Napoleon Bonaparte, who's a real huge guy, and you'd expect them to have more just personal moments with him. I thought Phoenix's restrained performance, while commendable, it lacked the intensity needed to breathe life into a character like Napoleon. In the end, you know, this movie just falls short of its potential. I thought it was, it had really good technical moments, but it just feels surprisingly small in its impact. For those who appreciate historical war epics purely for the visual spectacle, Napoleon may offer a bit of excitement. However, if you're really seeking a fun exploration of its titular character, the film might ultimately disappoint you. It isn't really that there's not a lot of synergy with the two main protagonists and how it connects to the battle sequences. It just feels like we're just flipping through a textbook. Here's this, here's this battle, here's this moment where they tried to have sex and they couldn't have a kid. There's just a lot of different moments crammed in here. I really do want to see the four-hour cut, though maybe I'll like that one more. So guys, let me know what you think, and thank you so much for watching.